So you want to animate a drip, but you don't know how. I'm here to tell you there's a nice and easy way to get nice dynamic shots as quickly as possible using, you guessed it, the best 3D software in the world. And if you follow these simple steps, you'll be a pro in no time at all. Tricky. The first thing you'll want to do is find a model. I went with this one from Wallon off Sketchfab, and I'll put the link in the description so you can download it too. Normally, most of these models are separated into parts, so to keep things clean and simple, we're going to combine all these parts into just two parts, the chassis and the wheels. Well, five parts. To join everything together, you want to select your object and press Ctrl J. The next thing you want to do is to set the origin of each mesh. This will speed up the rigging process by a thousand times. So to set the origins, you want to select the vertices surrounding the center of the object and press Ctrl S and select Cursor 2 selected. Now with the 3D cursor at the place you want the origin to be, head over to the object tab and click set origin and then click the 3D cursor. Now you should have the first wheel's origin correctly set so it spins properly. Now you're going to want to do the exact same thing for the rest of the wheels before moving on to the body of the car. For the car part, we want the origin to be directly between the front two wheels. So we're going to select the geometry of both the front wheels and align the cursor to the middle of those two points. And that's the model all prepared for rigging. For the rig, we're going to keep things really simple and we could use empties, but actually I find them less appealing to select and hard to read in the viewport. So we're going to be using an armature for this. I find it best practice to orient the root of the rig to the world. So to do this, make sure the 3D cursor is back at the origin. You can press Shift S again to select the tail of the bone to the 3D cursor. Now you just want to move along the Y axis so you can see the bones axis now matches the orientation of the world. Once this is set, we can duplicate this bone to make a wheel for each side plus the bone for the chassis. For the front wheel, we want it to be able to twist and rotate. And if we were to use the same bone for both rotations, we'd end up with some weird Euler issues. So I'll duplicate the wheel bone and scale it down. This offset bone wants to be parented to the previous wheel bone and both front and back wheels parented to the root offset bone. I've included a snapshot of the rig hierarchy because these steps can be quite confusing. To align the bones to the geometry correctly, select the mesh and press Shift S again to align the 3D cursor for the selection. Once you've done this, you can now go into edit mode, select the bones you want to align, press Shift S again and select selection to 3D cursor. You're going to want to do the exact same steps for the other wheels and the chassis. For the bones on the left, make sure you add a dot L suffix, that way Blender knows what bones to rename when it's mirrored. Once the left side is made, we can mirror it by going into edit mode and selecting the bones on the left hand side and selecting armature symmetrize. Skinning this rig is going to be super simple. You just select all the objects and the armature and press Ctrl P and parent the rig to empty groups. Then it's just a case of selecting those vertices and assigning them to the corresponding bone. Easy. Now of our car rig, now it's time to make the track. So create a Bezier curve, tab into edit mode and delete it. You can use the pen tool or the draw tool or it's up to you. Let your imagination run wild. Once you've created the curve, you can add some thickness to it by heading over to the curve properties and under geometry, change the extrude type. You may have to adjust the curve's tilt here to align it properly. With the road made, you want to make a new curve that the car will follow. Keep in mind that cars don't drive in the middle of the road, so look at reference and add some variation to keep this shot looking really interesting. With the curve made, you want to attach the car via a motion path. So head into the pose mode, select the root bone and add a follow curve modifier. Make sure fixed position and follow curve are on and you may have to tweak the up and forward vectors to get it facing the right way. Now it's just a matter of animating the offset so that the car moves from one end of the track to the other. A quick tip to getting this to look extra nice is to slow the car down as it approaches a corner and then slowly speed up as it comes out of it. For the drift part, we can animate the root offset bone to swing out as the car zooms through the corner. Take a look at some reference for this shot because the back end of the car doesn't swing out nearly half as much as you'd actually think. But it's your shot, so animate whatever you want. When you're happy, we can move on to the wheels. What I normally do is set some initial X rotation and then add a cycle modifier with an offset and adjust the keyframes until I'm happy that the movement matches the speed of the car. When I'm doing the same for the front wheels, I'm animating on the local bone. The parent will be used for the twisting, which we'll be moving on to next. The general rule for drifting is that the front tires will always be facing forward in the intended direction. Again, look at reference for this to make sure you absolutely nail it. When you're happy with that, you can add some extra polish by adding some noise on the Z translation and Y rotation of the chassis to give it a little bit of rumble as it's moving across the road. Make sure to keep this fairly subtle though, as you don't want it to be too distracting. I added a similar amount of noise to the camera as well, 
as if it's whizzing along at high speed. Add that extra bit of polish, we're going to be adding some skid marks. Skid marks. No, it's being childish. And they're so easy to do. Just create a curve following the rough path of one of the wheels and extrude it just like we did with the road. Next, you want to animate the start and end positions to match up with the wheel. I made keyframes every four or five frames and adjusted the curve to best fit the tires. I did the exact same for the other two tires since the wheel furthest from the camera was obscured for most of the animation. The next step was slapping on a really basic texture and this was just some noise followed by a colour ramp, adjusting the transparency of the object, which to be honest, you couldn't even really see anyway. And finally, the last step is added some smoke VFX for that extra wow factor using simulation nodes. I created a basic particle system that you can use for this example and the link to download this is in the description below. To use it in your own scenes, just head over to File, Append, Find the Scene and select Node Trees. Once you've imported it, you'll need to create an emitter. So for this, I just duplicated one of the skid marks and added a geometry nodes modifier. From here, you can add the node tree, change the settings as you wish. Now for this example, we're gonna add a few extra nodes to the end. So starting with a realize instance node, I convert the mesh to a volume and then back to a mesh again. This creates kind of a meta ball effect. Next, we're gonna to need to smooth it out with a set position node and into the position attribute, we're gonna connect a blur attribute node and into the value, we're gonna plug in a position node. Finally, we're going to add a set shade smooth node to smooth it all out and connect it back to the geometry output. These last couple of nodes are fairly PC intensive, so I recommend adding this at the very end just as you tweak the simulation to your liking. You also want to make sure you animate the start and end positions of the emitter to match up with your animation. And finally, we're done. You're now on your way to be fully fledged drift royalty. If you enjoyed this video, give me a like and subscribe if you want to hear more tips about animating in Blender. Please let me know in the comments how you think this turned out and what you want to see in the future. And if you really want to take to the skies of your next animation, click this video here. It might just skyrocket your creative potential.